Lord, we thank you and praise you for your word this morning. We ask, Lord, that you would open our hearts to receive what you have for us today. Lord, that your word would enter us and change us, that we would leave different than we came in. Lord, I pray that you would anoint my lips to speak what you would have us to hear. I ask this, Jesus, in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. My message titled this morning is Still Small Voice. And look at a just a brief passage in the Old Testament and then discuss what a still small voice is and really the uh, direction of the message is how to hear from God. How many would like to hear from God once in a while? You might find out you have been hearing from God. And you can continue to hear from Him. That's a good thing. But 1 Kings 19, 11 through 12, we'll give a little background to this on Elijah. He had come down from a great victory on Mount Carmel where he defeated the prophets of Baal. But after that, he got word that Jezebel was looking to put him to death. And so he went and hid away. And while he was hiding away, God came to him, speak to him. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Now the mountain where he was hiding, the cleft of the rock where he was hiding was the mountain, same mountain where Moses received the Ten Commandments. And he may have been hiding in the very spot where Moses was told to stand when God passed by Moses. We don't know. We just know it's the same mountain. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after a fire, after the fire, a still, small voice. So Elijah was a man, a prophet, that was used to seeing God doing mighty things. And his expectation that God would appear and come in a mighty way. So first there's this great wind, but God wasn't coming to him in a wind. It was an earthquake. He would expect God to come shaking the ground, but God wasn't in the earthquake. And how about a fire? He had just called fire down from heaven on Mount Carmel. But God wasn't in the fire. See, God chose to come to him in a different way this time. This time, instead of the prophet hearing from God in these mighty acts of power and the miraculous, he came to him in a very still, small voice. Sometimes it's easy to ignore a still small voice. But for Elijah, that would have been startling to him because this was completely different from the way he normally heard from God. God communicates with us in many different ways. Sometimes he does come in power and might and shaking, but not too much anymore. He comes in different ways. And we have to understand that God speaks to us in many different ways so that we can recognize when God is trying to say something to us. So often people say, how do I know when God wants to, is trying to talk to me? Well, hopefully after this message, you'll find he's probably been talking to you in a lot of different ways. You just have to learn to listen, just like we have to listen for a still small voice. God has communicated by hearing his voice through angels, prophets, dreams, visions, miracles, and even through a donkey. So I figure like I'm okay today because God can even speak through a donkey. <laughs> Christianity is a relationship. Every relationship is established and maintained through communication. You cannot have a relationship without communication. You cannot have a, a relationship with God without ongoing communication with God. Oftentimes we pray and that's one way, but God also wants to speak to us. See, it's a two-way relationship. But so often we're so busy and so concerned about our needs, we throw our needs up to God and we, and we 
take off running. Instead of, instead of waiting to see what God may want to say back. Maybe that very thing we're praying about, take this away from me, God, I can't handle it. He's trying to speak through that situation. Is he trying to speak to you through the adversity you're going through, through the trouble that you're experiencing? All that comes to help us to grow. But we get used to this idea of prayer is just to take some time and tell God everything we need. Give him our list. I kind of relate it to, to like going to a fast food restaurant. You speak to the clown and tell the clown what you want, and then you drive around and get it. <laughs> Some people are like that. Right? Speak to God, tell God what you want, and then just you know, go on your way and, and, and get what you ask for. Sometimes God says no. Doesn't mean he wasn't speaking to you. But maybe what you were asking for wasn't the best thing for you. We can't get mad at God for trying to do His best for us. But a lot of people get mad. Well, I asked God to do this and He never did it. I'm done. There is no God. Well, maybe you're asking for something that was not good for you. Does a good parent give their children something that's bad for them just because they want it? Do you know it's going to harm them? No. But communication goes two ways. We've got to get past just asking and also listening. God spoke to us through His Son when Jesus was on the earth. And when Jesus returned to the Father, the Holy Spirit was sent to lead us into all truth, to be our communicator from God. So after the Old Testament period when God was speaking through the prophets, Jesus came and He spoke to us through His Son. God Himself became a man and walked the earth and spoke to us. And we have what he spoke written down in our Bibles. And when Jesus left, he said, I'm not leaving you alone. I'm not leaving you like a bunch of orphans. I'm leaving you a helper. He left us the Holy Spirit to communicate to us from God. We have to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with you always if you've accepted Christ as your Savior. He lives in you. You are, the Bible says, the temple of the Holy Spirit. God no longer dwells in a tent or in a temple. His presence is no longer above a golden ark. When Jesus died on the cross, you know that the veil in the temple was torn, torn wide open. And it was a thick veil, and it just tore on its own, top to bottom. God ripping open and saying, now it's open to all men. You know, the uh, historian Josephus that lived during that time wrote that in the temple in Israel, after that occurred, that the priest would lock the temple doors at night and they had these big bolts that went down into the ground and would lock the doors shut. When they'd come in the morning, the doors were wide open. They didn't know how they'd open. They'd do that every day. The doors just kept opening on their own. Because God was trying to tell him, no, I no longer dwell inside this building. I am available to all of you. He's available to us. He doesn't live in a building. He lives in you. John 14, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. He's going to bring it to your remembrance. Some God can speak to you today. You can be quietly in prayer waiting on God and all of a sudden something will come into your remembrance. Because He can bring things into remembrance. Something you read in the, in the Word. And it comes back to suddenly you go, oh, that's an answer to what I'm asking. It says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So Jesus said, it's actually to your advantage that I'm going away because then the Holy Spirit will come to you and He will be with you always to be your helper. God speaks to us through His Word. You know, you've heard that many, many times, but how many has that really sunk in? I know there's a number of you that do the devotionals every day. You know, God can speak to you through those devotionals. 
When you pick up your Bible, you read through your Bible, if you do the do the Bible of the year, reading through it, all of a sudden you'll be reading upon it, something will jump out of the page. And I never saw that before. How many of you ever said that when you're reading the Bible? I've read this passage, but I never saw that before. Did somebody go in there and write that in? <laughs> Wait, it's printed in there. That's not a new Bible. That's how the Holy Spirit will bring you. The word alive, so it speaks to you. God speaks through his word. We hear his voice when we spend time in Bible study and quiet contemplation of his word. We don't want to just study, but we also want to quietly think about it, contemplate it. What did it just say? You see, the, the Hebrew idea of reading God's word and studying the Bible is a little different than what most of us are taught. See, most of us were taught the Greek way of looking at at studying and contemplating. See, when the Greeks would read a passage, they would try to take everything out of it. They could pick it apart. Um, I remember a teacher telling a good example. He said, it's like if you hear somebody say, you know, an arrow flies through space. I mean, you're thinking, what does that mean? Does it move like a fly? Going through space, does that mean it's in outer space? See, that's the Greek way, try to pick it apart, all the words. But the Hebrew way is you, you read and you say, what did that just say and how do I change my life to apply that to my life? That's how we should be contemplating God's word. When we read something that jumps out of the page, what is that saying to me and what do I need to change in my life according to what I just read? We discover God's word, his will, through his written word. A lot of people ask me, how do you know what God's will is? Well, a lot of times, just read God's word. There are some specific spots that say, this is his will. It's not that great a mystery. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16-18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything gives thanks, for this is the will of God. Okay, well, God's will is for you to pray without ceasing, and in everything gives thanks and rejoice always. There's three things you know are God's will. What does that mean to pray without ceasing? That means to be in an attitude of communication with God always in your life. Doesn't mean you're stopping and you just, you know, you don't do anything, you just pray constantly. No, it means you're in an attitude of relationship with God and communicating with God. How many of you ever found themselves busy working on something and you're you're talking to God? I used to do that, even started doing that before I truly had a relationship with God. I worked in a jewelry store as a jeweler after I was out of high school. And I would find myself staring at what my fingers were making and going, how am I doing that? God, you must have given me this ability. I mean, literally would say that. Because I was contemplating God. That was before I really understood my relationship with him. But I knew that God had something to do with it because I'd see myself doing things I didn't know. And I still sometimes I'll go to fix something and something will just come to me, I'll know how to do it. And I'll thank God for that because it wasn't me. God could do that. And that's how we pray without ceasing, constantly being aware that God is there. God is directing us. God cares about even the little things in our lives. And you can talk to him, even if it's just in your mind. While you're working, take that time, thank Him for it, and give Him thanks and rejoice. All those things are God's will. So that shouldn't be a mystery. Again, Thessalonians says, for this is the will of God. Well, you want to know the will of God. It says the will of God is your sanctification. That means you're becoming more and more like Jesus every day. That you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. Oh, well, that might be hard for some people to read. But what you're, the will of God is to abstain from all forms of sexual immorality. That's not always easy, but it's God's will. And that's what we need to ask him to help us. <laughs> Not to be like the Gentiles, but that means not to be like those that don't know God. We talked about that, I think, I'm not going to go into a lot of depth this week, but last week. 
a world where we're being bombarded with sexual immorality. To the point it seems like that's the way you should live and anybody's not living in this, then somehow you're just, you know, you're missing out, you're an outcast, you're missing out on life. Missing all the fun. No, you're missing all the destruction that comes along with it. 1 Peter 2, 12-15 says, Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of salvation. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors, or to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So as Christians, we should be people that obey the law. The only time you don't obey the law is if the law is telling you to do something that's con contradictory to God's word. If they're trying to make you do something that is breaking God's word or against God's word, no, you don't have to obey that law. But you should go to the speed limit. It's the law. You shouldn't run red lights. You shouldn't take things that don't belong to you when you're in the store. See, those are what it's talking about here. Be a good person. A person that doesn't do those things, people are going to say, well, you're different. You don't do all this stuff. How come? Because I love God. Because Jesus is my Savior. And I want to live according to His Word. So to understand this passage again is you don't have to bow down to governors or authorities or ask them to do something that violates God's Word. And I would take that just a step further for you. If they're asking you to do something that violates the Constitution of this land that we're under, that Constitution has not been torn up. It's still the law of the land. That's right. And they have no right to tell you or ask you to do something that's in violation of that. Because when they're doing that, they're breaking the law. Amen. God's children can hear His voice. Do you hear His voice? John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. If you've accepted Christ as your Savior, you've received him into your life. You did that because you heard his voice and you knew you needed a savior. Mm -hmm. And now you're following him. We'll continue to listen for his voice. See, the sheep back in his day followed the shepherd. The shepherd would call them and the sheep would come. They didn't drive the sheep. They didn't walk behind them with, with and drive the sheep forward with, with dogs biting at their heels. They led the sheep. Just the opposite of what we see today. You know, you see people that raise these beautiful sheep dogs and they, they have these competitions and they have the sheep dogs herding the sheep together and putting them into a pen. And that's that's really cool to watch that they could train them that way, but it was done different. In Jesus' day, the sheep knew the shepherd's voice. And all he'd have to do is call out to them and they would follow the shepherd. And that's how we should be. We should be driven to do the things that God wants us to do. We should do them because we follow his voice. God speaks to us through circumstances. Sometimes circumstances that you're in, or you're in that circumstance, because God is trying to speak to you. He's trying to show you something through that circumstance. 1 Peter 1, 67 says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by the various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, through it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glorify at the revelation of Jesus Christ. There will be times when we're going to go through trials, and circumstances, but there, we're going through them for a reason. God is speaking to us through that time. And it's usually because there's something about us that He needs to change to make us more like Him. Well, Wednesday night, we were going through the fruits of the Spirit. We were talking about the different fruits, we get to the one called patience. 
And that's a difficult one for most people. Because in order to get patience, you have to go through situations that make you very impatient. But through that circumstance, God will make you more patient. And if you're not a patient person, expect that. That when God wants to grow that fruit in you, you're going to have a lot of things. It's just one after another. You're going to just try your patience. But it's for our good. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In, your, in all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. If you truly believe, if you truly trust God that He's directing your path, that whatever situation or circumstance you find your life leading you into, it's because God is directing that path for a reason. And if it's a difficult time, we'll usually come out of it quicker when we discover what it is God's trying to say to us through that time. And if we don't get the message, sometimes we'll linger longer in that trial until finally we go, okay, God, I understand. And we see something about ourselves through that trial that needs to change and become more like Jesus. God speaks to us through others. One of the best places to find individuals who can give you godly counsel is in your local church. You are in one of the best places you can be in to get good counsel from other believers. Psalm 1, 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. But how many go to ungodly people to seek counsel? And they don't come to their brothers and sisters in the Lord to ask for their help or their advice. Ungodly people aren't going to you know, necessarily give you good counsel. They're not necessarily going to turn you to God's Word and to what God wants. We have to be careful about the counsel that we seek out. Because God does want to speak to us through other people. We see that throughout the scripture. Sometimes they were prophets. Sometimes they were just somebody that God put a message on for a moment. And they spoke God's message. And oftentimes when somebody speaks to you a message from God, it will be to confirm something God has already put on your heart. I know in, in some churches in there, people would go around and they would give what they call a personal prophecy. Oh, God just spoke to me to tell you such and such. Well, if that ever happens with you and somebody says that God gave them a personal message from you, you know it's from God if it confirms something that God has already spoken to you. If it doesn't, wait for confirmation from somewhere else. Because it isn't always from God just because somebody says it is. Because... He always confirms something he's already put on your heart. An example might be someone that's thinking about going in a particular type of ministry. And they really feel like God is saying they're to do that. And somebody comes along and says, God has spoken to me and you're, you're to be a missionary in such and such a place. And they go, wow, I was already been thinking about that for weeks. See, that's how God will confirm it. How it doesn't happen, I heard a story about Yes, no, that's not. I heard a story about some uh, students at a Bible college, and towards the end of the year, everybody always asked me, did you get a word from God? Do you know what ministry you're going into? And, and these uh, particular students who were all in one dorm room had one of their roommates. He had not heard anything from God yet, so they thought for fun they would help him along. So when he was sleeping, and he was a heavy sleeper, they took a hose and ran it from the second floor window down the floor and put the end of the hose behind his bed. And then they got there and spoke in the hose. Johnny, this is God speaking. You're going to be a missionary in some... God speaking. No, that's not how God works. That's why I'm waiting for the confirmation, just in case it's your roommates pulling a, a joke on you. But my wife would remind me that, and this is something that I've always have gone by, and the Lord showed me is wait for it to be confirmed at least three sources. He's always spoken in my life that way, and it'll be three separate sources, not not three people coming up to you at once. That would be one source, but then another source. And then another source, you know, wait, I think God's trying to get my attention here. That's because scripture says that truth is 
it is confirmed by two or more witnesses. That's what scripture says. And so you gotta have two or more witnesses from God on the truth. One of them might have been God speaking to you in prayer, and somebody else comes and confirms that, and another person confirms that, or you confirm that reading God's word. Three different sources. A good it's a good rule to keep you out of hearing the wrong thing. But God does sometimes speak in a still small voice. Now people have heard God speak audibly to them. I've had that happen once in my life. It was when I was a baby Christian, just giving my heart to the Lord. And actually I was trying to think when that was, and it was the day that I was baptized in the Holy Spirit in the New Life Bible class at church. I went home and I was praying. And praying in my new prayer language. And I heard God's voice say, I want you to feed my sheep. Not my sheep, my children. He said, I want you to feed my children. And immediately it came to me what I was seeing on TV. At that time, you were seeing every day these, these advertisements for giving food to starving children in Ethiopia. Right. And I thought, okay, well, Lord, where do I send the money? Right? He goes, no, you don't understand. I want you to feed my children. And I said, well, what, Lord, how do you want me? He says, feed my children my word because they're not being fed at home. And that was my calling into ministry. And that's the only time I could say God's, that I heard God's voice. I heard a voice speaking to me while I was alone. That doesn't happen that often. It's usually a still, small voice. It's just a silent voice that you hear within you. And you need to listen for that. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. In order to hear from God, sometimes we need to follow that be still. Just be quiet for a time and listen. Zechariah 2.13 says, Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. There's a time to be silent. And I challenge you in your times of prayer, also take some time and just be silent and see if God is speaking to you during that time. Just wait few minutes and maybe he won't maybe he will but practice that the more we practice it the more we'll learn to hear that still small voice speaking within us and guiding us and directing us but that's part of having a relationship speak to God but then take time to give him an opportunity to speak to you it's all about relationship two-way communication uh, in a little different, we're going to bow our heads and pray. But I want to, if you would like, after I'm done praying, to come and spend some time at the altar quietly, or just where you're at before you leave. So I'm going to ask that when I'm done with prayer, that we just keep it quiet in the room. If you need to leave, you just step out quietly. If you want to visit, we go to the back. I think there's still some some snacks back there. But let those that want to sit quietly before God just for a few minutes. Just, we need to practice. And we'll continue doing that in the, in the weeks to come. Give up opportunity at the altars. But some of you may be going some through, I don't know what all of your, everybody's going through. You may not be going through any challenges right now, but you might have some challenges and you just need God's direction on that. And this is a good time. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for your word. Lord, we all want to learn to hear your voice, to learn to spend time to listen to you. But Lord, we can't hear from someone we don't know. If there's anybody at all, without anybody looking around, if you've not accepted Christ as your Savior, you can do that today. With no one looking around, if you'd like to receive Jesus today and say, yes, I want to invite him into my life. I want to follow him. I want to learn to hear his voice. You can slip your hand up and I'll include you in a closing prayer. Lead you in a prayer to accept Christ. I know there's someone praying just to, you want to hear from God more frequently. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for your word today, Lord. Those here, Lord, that want to hear from you, they want direction, they want to know what you want for their lives, that you would speak to them today, Lord. 
Each of us would learn to quiet ourselves long enough to hear your voice. Let that become part of our daily routine, Lord, to spend a few minutes listening to what you have to say to us. But Lord, help us to recognize you when you speak to us through your word. Help us to recognize you when you speak to us through circumstances. Help us to recognize you when you're speaking to us through others. We want this relationship to be a two-way relationship, Lord. That we just don't yell at you all the time and throw at you all what we want, what we want you to do. But that we take time to listen to you and find out what you want for us. We ask that, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. So if you want to spend some...